right, I'm going to be using the app this morning as best I know how to. How about that? Uh, the the, the uh, title of today's message is Reckon Yourself. And uh, God's been wrecking us in here recently, huh? In a good way. So uh, let's just open in prayer. We'll dive right into this thing. So, Father, I thank you just for your goodness. I thank you that you are bringing us into a place uh, that you have dreamed of, of, of bringing a people, a, a congregation, a family. And I thank you that you have, over the last eight years plus, you've been building connection and love and compassion and family in the midst of us that we could not have done on our own strength. Holy Spirit, I thank you that as the word goes forth this morning, that, it will, that you will quicken it within us and bring revelation, and uh, as we continue to, to look in the mirror, we see more of Christ looking back at us, because it is the revelation of who we are in you, the work that you have performed within us to transform us, to reflect you, to be the influencers, the world changers you've called us to be. I thank you that we are seated in heavenly places far above every principality and power. And any name that could ever be named, we sit and are seated with you in Christ Jesus, enveloped, surrounded, and swallowed in the fullness of what that name represents. Amen. Amen. <sighs> Hallelujah. God is good, amen, all the time. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to dive right into it. Um, what we've been working on, um, I'm going to turn around and turn my back to you real quick because I'm going to go back here, um, is of our eight uh, framed proclamations over there, we're still working on the identity. And uh, yes, this ha we are in uh, the end of May. We're heading into June. And this is still something that's a part of the slow turn that we're making. Uh, I will continue to reinforce the things that we've been saying because it's important. Repetition is safe, amen? It's very important to be able to say something. And when, when you're practicing to get something in you, it takes a while. You keep saying it and saying it and saying it. And they say after 21 days, it becomes a part of you. Anything you practice that diligently. Habits seem to be a lot easier. So what I'm working and deviling into is making this new understanding a habit for you as well as for myself to reinforce it in me. So uh, we're going to start off this morning uh, reckoning ourselves by looking at 2 Corinthians 5.17. And these are, these are the scriptures, these are the addresses that I've been talking to you about to get this understanding, the revelation of who you are in Christ Jesus. So 2 Corinthians 5.17 says in the New American uh, Standard Bible, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away, behold, new things have come. And that is really the pivotal part. It's one of the, the real building blocks of where we are and what we are establishing in this house. Therefore, that means bam, therefore is a statement of fact. Therefore, if or since anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things passed away, behold, all things have become new. That is a statement for you to get the revelation. That ties in so precisely, and I'm going totally off notes, so if I lose you, that's okay. Don't worry about the notes. Just follow me, the, and you can always watch this on YouTube. But when you get that understanding, all things have become new, and you recognize that we are in Christ, a new creation. Old things have passed away. That is, that's the carnal man. And I've got notes in my bag there that I have not been allowed to get out yet. And I'm just waiting on the timing of the Lord to bring this out and uncover it for you. Um, okay, I'm coming back. I want to go there so bad. It's 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 uh, it's difficult, but because I'm ready. But He says no. I got to walk you through this. So this is the foundation I have to build before I can uh, back up the house that's that's ready to be offloaded. I have to get the foundation laid. So this has to be strongly within you before I reveal what's on that paper. Okay. And I've spent two weeks building this thing. So the new creation, the new creature, old things have passed away, carnal's gone. 
This totally engages 2 Peter 1.3. You, you might as well get used to it. What does 2 Peter 1.3 say? We, uh, we have everything pertaining to life and godliness according to our knowledge of Him who called us by His glory. That is these two working together. The new creation we have, the new creation has everything pertaining to life and godliness through our knowledge, through the revelation of what this is. The new creation gets the revelation of everything that we have in life and godliness. Bless you, Gene. Bless you, Scott. Be safe. So as we go into this, this is the root. This is the, the foundational stones that stand and butt up against Christ, our cornerstone. That as we understand and God reveals what the new creation is and has, this is the real where it materializes and is established in this life. It comes from out of the faith field into the reality of this reality life field. All right? So what we're doing is we're transferring that washing over in the in, in a Hebraic uh, thought, the spirit realm and the and this reality are not separated. The Western mindset says spiritual's over there. This reality is separate, and every once in a while, Jesus makes this bridge where they cross over. That is not how it is. That's a Western mindset that came out of Aristotle and Plato and all those knuckleheads. Okay, They twisted up our mindsets and destroyed a lot of stuff and has taken our faith and watered it down where it's, it's so watered down, there's not even any flavor left. Faith has left the building with this Western mindset, and I come against it boldly. And if, they, if that offends you, I am not sorry because you know what? Jesus came to offend. And truth will offend your belief system when it is out of alignment with God's truth and what he says about you. So coming into this, we have everything pertaining to life and godliness. That means you are as holy as the new creation as you understand that you are through the revelation of what God has done through making you a new creation. Does that make sense? Do I need to say it again? I think I can. New creation. Everything is new. Old things are gone. This is pure, pure vision and desire of Father God. It happens to us and we don't understand what it means. We don't know what it, it, what it holds for us. We can't find our back pockets with both hands with this because it's being re revealed to us. It is here in 2 Peter 1.3 where it says, we have everything pertaining to godliness through our understanding. That understanding comes as God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus reveals what we are now. Because we go, I need to, I need to get acquainted with the new me. It is so off my chart that I don't understand the parameters. I don't know where the guardrails are. So in holiness, how holy am I? I am the righteousness of God in Christ. That means I can't get any more. My works are worthless. I cannot achieve righteousness by going out and washing my neighbor's car, giving his dog a bath, and helping him out. Those are good works. That's what we're due to do. But I don't get an extra little star or an extra, extra bonus points by doing that. I may get a, an abundance of, oh, that feels nice. But that doesn't make me any more righteous by doing that. But righteousness in me is revealed by my actions. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Thank goodness. I, I thought I was talking to the, to the walls in here. So then, that's godliness. Let's talk about reality, the things about life. Life is, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I don't know how long ago it was, when I sang that song in response to life, it was rough and it was guttural, but it responded for where we, we sometimes find ourselves. We find ourselves here and God's glory and His light's way over there and we don't know how to flip and get there. And it's very frustrating. And see, that's where we have this, where we have everything pertaining to life, according to our knowledge of Him. So here's the new creation. It's called and designed to speak to mountains, to bring kingdom, heaven being released on earth, living waters pouring out of you that bless you and to bless all those around you, get everybody soaking wet, okay? And we press through, and you know what? We have life issues. We get sick. We have stuff happen. Big flipping deal. It does not dissuade or change my mind about how my God loves me. So in this life, we have everything pertaining to life. So it's like, okay, Lord, how does this work out? I'm not really good at this. That's okay. The new creation in you, you're getting acquainted to how this works out. 
you're getting acquainted with how faith mixed with this the newness of who you are, that's where faith works. That's the rub. See this rub? Okay, that's what happens. We start having life and you start getting the rubbing life and you get like, oh, it's getting hot. Yeah, it's getting hot. The fire of God's doing something. He is fine-tuning you. You're that little piece of pottery that's in there getting fired up. And man, there's if you do that for a while, you know what happens? You get those little beads, that little you ever done that? Rub your hands again, there's little pieces. That's because stuff gets rubbed off of you. All right? The fire of God will rub you until those pieces that don't belong there get burned off and rubbed off until the beauty of who you are is revealed. That's what life is, is to do, and that's how we respond. Well, that was nowhere in the notes, but that's okay. I think it was all right. Does that make sense? Okay. So all things become new. They are new, past tense, but there's a constant revelation of how this unfolds. This is the challenge of having the mind of Christ. The new creation gets the mind of Christ in both realms. It gets the mind of Christ in godliness and reality. That's because we are dual citizens. We are of heaven and of earth at the same time, just like Christ was. Christ was pure God, pure man. We are of that because we are in Christ, and those realms work that way. The mind of Christ working in both dimensions. That is a learned part of the maturing that we are in Christ. It takes time. It is the process of the revealing, the understanding of who we are. We, you're still with me? I'm trying to give you a real simple tinker toy story here. All right. That's why the, the, the reformation of our identity must come into change. So with that being said, I think I put a, a foundation out there. Let's go to Colossians 2, 6 through 10. Therefore, there's another, there's that word again. Therefore, you know, it's like, boom, exclamation point. Therefore, because of these things, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. There's your process, folks, walking in Him. It is the place of where you're understanding old things have passed away. I can go, I run in the bathroom and flush it so you could hear it, but you understand the sound. You've been in there enough in your life. Maybe you know what it sounds like. Unless you have a privy and there's a different sound. Rustling of the Sears Roebuck catalog, okay? But anyhow, old things have passed away. Walk in your daily revelation of who you are in the godliness through the new creation and the understanding of who you are and what God has provided in this life because of the new creation, being one with Him. It's walking out who you are in Christ. Therefore, as you have received Christ the Lord, so walk in Him. It's that is an understanding of that. When you say you're in Christ, what did I tell you what, what that really meant? You're sinking in Him. When you're in Christ, it's not like you're putting on a coat. It's like you're sinking in Him. There was a little boy back in Ohio, I think it was, might have been in Pennsylvania this last week. He fell into a 10-foot deep thing under the barn where all the cow stuff went. And it was liquid. He was little. Right? He was three or four. And you know what? When you fall into that, you're wanting out of there as fast as you can get. He survived. They got him out of there. All right? But it's, a, it's that he started to sink. Now, I want you to look at a nice picture of you falling into the goodness of God, Jesus, and you're sinking into him. and You feel it swelling up around you, and he swallows you up. Your identity is in him. You're not just putting on a garment. Okay? You're being swallowed by the goodness of God. It surrounds you, and it brings life. Okay? So, walk in Him, having been firmly... This is, how you, this is how you walk it out. Having been firmly rooted and now being built up in Him and established in your faith. Those are three steps. Okay? I've been talking about that on my little video clip blogs. I've been talking about that for some time because, you know what? This, we've been at this a little bit. But repetition is safe. Amen? How many times did your mother tell you or your dad tell you, don't do that? And then he accompanied that with a response, usually of love, in whatever design he chose to help you make those decisions. All right? So recognize, we are going to be going through a transition of walking in him. And in the midst of that, we become firmly rooted. This is the process of the transition of going from our mind to the mind of Christ being revealed. And suddenly, when you, and you know what I'm talking about when revelation hits, you go, whoa, you go from that, no, it's not possible, and all of a sudden, 
It could happen. Remember angels in the outfield, that little boy? Okay, he goes, it could happen. Everybody else was like, nah, this ain't going to happen. Little boy, little childlike faith, it could happen. Recognize, that's where faith jumps in the mix. It's like you can make a cake, but without sugar, it's kind of bland. You throw some sugar in there, and then you put icing on top, good gravy. We were fighting people off to get away from that. It's good stuff. Mixing faith with what we're getting. It's like, remember last week I talked about they heard the same word as we did, but they didn't mix it with faith? They got nothing. We got something. We're mixing what we're hearing with faith. So having been firmly rooted, that's, that's where you're going down deeper. As you're sinking into being in Christ, you're, going, you're being rooted. You're going and you're just digging deeper, digging deeper. Because you know what? Life's like a hurricane most of the time. And if you don't have deep roots, you're blowed over, run over, or plucked out and sucked off into a desert someplace. So we've got to be firmly rooted. That means we're hanging on for dear life. And what's really cool is I think it's aspens or some of these other trees that have shallow roots. They grow their roots amongst the other trees around them. And by then, they're like a solid thing. It ain't going no place. That's why you need church. You get these people that say, oh, I, I don't like church. I'll have church in my home all by myself. Good luck with that. Okay, you live in that delusion as long as you want to, but eventually you're going to realize it's not good to, to sacrifice being together. Because I need people around me. I don't know about you all. I'm not that strong. But I know that if I loot the roots of love and they intertwine with your roots of love, we'll hold on to each other in times of crisis. When the winds and the buffeting and, and those tempests come, in this life you will have difficult times. All right? So we need each other. So, and now being built up. So you've been fruit, you've been rooted together. Now being built up, that's where, bam, stuff starts really being revealed. You start getting a hold of faith, and it starts to build the tenacity and the boldness that you have in Christ. And your walk, it's not like, okay, you're walking like this into a headwind. You know? No, now you've, been, you've come to a place where you're bold, you're just blowing through. It's like, this is how it's going to be. You get a little attitude in your walk because then you know you walk right through a crowd like Jesus did when they were going to chuck him off a cliff. What does it say? He walked right through them. I, I, I love to see the look on his face. when he, They had him at the cliff, and he's looking down, and he said, that's not my destiny. He turned around. I'm going to my destiny. It's that way. And he turned around, and he just looked at him. He walked right through the midst of them. Can you imagine what the atmosphere must have been electrified because they went, whoa. Man, step back. Give that man some room. He is coming through. That's what life does. It responds to where you are. Does it, and does it work every time? No. But does that change my boldness? No. I'm just stupid enough to trust Jesus. If you want to phrase it that way. You can call me a fool, but you know what? They called Jesus a, a, a wine-bibber and those that love sinners. I guess I can fit right next to him being a fool, being stupid enough to trust him on his word. Because I ain't going to trust my word because sometimes it don't work. I heard a whistle. That's all right. So now being built up in him and established in your faith, that's when you're walking it out. Man, I'm hot. It's okay. Maybe a little warm. Is that front door popped open so we get a cross breeze? Okay, thank you, Brian. I get preaching like this, I get hot. Things happen. I don't want to kill the microphone. That happened a couple weeks ago. We don't want to do that again. That wasn't fun. It took a while to reset everything. So, established in faith, just as you were instructed. Who instructed us? Holy Spirit. Those people around you that speak life. All right? What does Holy Spirit do? Reminds us of everything He said. You're being instructed. You're being trained up. The Word of God is being solidified and established in your life. All right. You were, just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude in the midst of this the stuff that we're learning, revealing of all that we have for life and God that is being revealed to us. What happens in the midst of that? It is with gratitude. You have no idea how many times I sit back with the Holy Spirit and say, I cannot thank you enough for making this so easy for me. Now, I can say, you know what? I'll, I'll put it this way. You get a Navy SEAL that has a, a, a an order and they go through and they go by 100 people, and they take out a certain amount of people, and they take out their target, and they go back home, they go, wow, that was easy. You and I, we'd be, we'd be going, that was the most heinous thing I've ever had to face. It's perspective here, folks. It's your perspective of how you see and the filters you have about life. 
my wife and I are war- walking through some things and, and of the experiences in life, and it's like, you know what? Two years ago, we wouldn't have been this way. Six weeks ago, we wouldn't have been this way. Uh, Monday, last week, we wouldn't be this way. But today, we got something new revelation inside of us that we can't go back to the old way of thinking. It don't work no more. Because God showed us something so absol- I mean, absolutely incredible that the old ways have become obsolete. There's no life in them any longer. They're just a structure that we stood upon to get where we are now. Does that make sense? Okay. So we give gratitude. We give thanks where it where it's, uh, needs to be given. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception. In other words, man, you're rocking it here. Don't let some knucklehead come in and tell you something different. Steal all that you've acquired through revelation. Don't do that. Don't forfeit everything that you've sacrificed to get to. Hold your ground in faith firmly rooted in him and established and built up. And when you when that thing comes at you, those people come to through captive uh, through philosophy and empty deception according to the traditions of man, you tell them, "I ain't buying it. I call BS back seat." So shut up. That's what BS means. You knew that, right? Back seat. Get thee behind me, Satan. Now, you guys, I'm, I'm getting you some good stuff here today. Okay? So according to the traditions of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ, don't lower yourself to the worldly mentality. Man, that's that's. That's not even basic Christianity. It is an abomination to build your life on the traditions of men and the elementary principles of this world. If it wasn't an abomination, why did Eve get in, in Adam get in so much trouble? Because they base it, they went and changed the base of reality. They went from walking with God, whole complete oneness, to well, you know what? I don't have everything I need, so I got to work myself out. That's, the, that's an abomination to God. That whole process was an abomination. Think about it. You want to discuss it? We'll discuss it another time. But I want you to think about that. Rather than according to Christ. According to Christ is the mind of Christ in you fully pulling back the curtain and going, hey, Mike, take a look at this. This is the reality of you being in me, fully swallowed, rooted, and built up in me. This is the reality I have for you. That's what he's saying to you folks, if you listen. If you can hang on to him like a squirrely little monkey and wrap your arms around and hang on for dear life, because you know what? He's got a hold of you way stronger than your little monkey arms can hold on. Okay? He, his, he sees you complete in him. Father sees you complete in him. Holy, you know, Jesus knows you are fully completed in Him because He can feel you inside of Him. Do you know the joy He experiences by feeling you a part of Him, your identity and thoughts mixed with His in the conversation? Well, you know, Jesus, this today was a rough day. He goes, yeah, tell me about it. Oh, man, you know, this is, these guys came against me. And, they, did, 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 did. and He goes, you know what, I know, I can empathize. I, I've been there. Remember when the, they dragged me before the Sanhedrin and they did all this? I, I, I felt that offense. But you know what? My kingdom wasn't of theirs and neither is yours. So shake that dirt and cow dung and camel poop off of you and get on with life and show them what real life looks like. That makes sense. Are you with me? Amen! All right. For in Him, where in Him, Christ All the fullness of the deity dwells in bodily form, and in him you have been made complete. Oh, I'm going to read that again. I think that sounded pretty good. In him you have been made complete. Not being made. It's done. Past tense. Whether you believe it or not, it's done. That's the new creation. The new creation has has not grasped the completeness of, of being made past tense in that moment. Do you know you were made complete before the creation of the world? 
there's something that'll spin your head off sideways. You were completely made righteous before anything was even brought forth because Christ was crucified before the foundations of the earth, right? You know that should be true. So if that is true, you were made completely righteous in this life to experience it now before the creation of the world because of your choice of being in Christ in that moment. What does that do to your life? I don't have to try to be holy anymore because I already am. But Pastor Mike, yeah, you can say all the buts and arguments you want, but I'm going to show you scripture here. We'll talk about it. If I am in Christ Jesus, it's not my works that got me there. It was his choice to go and swallow me. I said, oh, I like this. I'll, yes, amen, give me some more. Can I have another? Can I have a little more? I'm showing you something. This is the next 10 years that you're, you are going to be so different in, in the, at least another year, two years, three to five, it's five to seven. This, you will not recognize who you are. And you will influence this city and the places you go in the next 10 years that you would have never dreamed that you could. Because what we're unpacking here, what, we're, what Jesus is pulling back the curtain so you can see. And he is the head over all rule and authority. Is that just heavens? No. That's not just the angels. It's everything. Everything in this earth is held together by him. You know that scripture, right? Everything that we see is held together by him. There's a scripture that tells you that. I don't have the address right now, but it just kind of floated by, so I thought I'd throw it out there for you. You'll find it later. Go look it up. You all can, Okay, Colossians, good. All right, let's go on to the next one. 2 Corinthians 5.17 is going to read the same thing, the same scripture out of the mirror. Okay, in this house, I'm encouraging, we're going to have, I'm going to encourage you, number one, get the mirror Bible, either a physical version. I use, I get the Kindle version, so I get all the updates. All right, what's really cool about that, I'm, going to, I'm doing a plug for, you know, Francois. All right, and he's a good friend of John, uh, John Crowder, who's up in Portland. He goes and actually teaches with him. But anyhow. You can, if you get the hardback, I mean, like Penny's got one. I know Scott and Jean have one. We have a red version. There's blue versions. But when you get the Kindle, what's really cool about this is you just go on Amazon and get the newest update, and he's writing on Revelation right now. It's constantly being redone. So if you have the paper version, oh, okay, well, that one's kind of like outdated. He's got all the new stuff. So that's why I choose Kindle. All right? The other book is Jonathan Welton's book that we're doing right now in a Sturt Word Study. Okay? Have you guys looked into that? I pray you have. Don't raise your hand because you'll feel guilty. Okay? If you, for those, okay, there you go. There's a few of us that have. But I want you to know, these are the things, these are the big rock busters I'm putting in your hands so you can start rock busting some of your thinking. Free your mind. Okay, Morpheus said it right. I'm here to show you the door. You've got to open it. I want to free your minds from the stuff you've been taught. I want to show you what the Word has to say. This Word will set you free because it's the truth. It'll set you free from so much unbelief and garbage. I'm getting off my soapbox. Mirror Bible says, Now in the light of your co-inclusion in His death and resurrection. Now, bam, new creation in the light of, bam. In other words, there's revelation there. Now, the revelation of who you are, your co-inclusion. You've been swallowed up. You're in Christ Jesus in the midst of this. In His death and resurrection, you went there that's what the Scripture says. You died with Him and you were raised with Him. Whoever you thought you were before, the carnal man, the old way of thinking, in Christ you are a brand new person. <laughs> brand new. Not written on, not messed up. Totally fulfilling. Bam. Beautiful expression. Just like being reset back to Adam before the messed up. Oh, but pastor, that can't. Read it for yourself. New creations is a new creation. The old ways of seeing yourself and everyone else are over. That's very important key. Stop looking at yourself and stop looking at others through the carnal man's eyes. Through that belief system where it's more of a, uh, I'm suspecting that there's something wrong with you 
So I'm looking for a confirmation that you're messed up. And say, instead of looking at someone saying, they're the image of Christ, I'm looking for the gold nuggets, not looking for the stuff it's hidden in. I'm speaking the blessing of God and drawing out of them who they are in Christ, not who I thought they were or how I've perceived them to be or whatever box I put them in. The old ways of seeing yourself and all, everyone else is over. Done. <laughs> Acquaint yourself with the new. I like that. Acquaint yourself. You know, you get a new car. I went. We were down in L.A. this earlier this year, and I got in this car, and it's one of them cars you just, it's got one of them little fobs. You don't even have a key. I'm a just old farmer boy. It's got an old pickup truck. You put the key in there, 71 Ford. You pump it 20 times because there ain't no gas pump in this thing. You pump that thing up, and you know, vroom, 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 and the whole truck shakes. You know? I get in this little car, and I go, and the lights all light up on the dash. Patty's sitting there. I'm going, open the door. I ain't hearing nothing. So I, I'm like, I have no clue how this works, okay? And I'm I'm pushing buttons all over, and I'm saying, get the owner's manuals out. So you should get out the owner how you start the car. Finally, I said, you know what? This is too hard. We're working too hard. I go back inside and say, look, man, I'm an old farmer. I got a pickup truck without a key. What do you do with this stupid thing? It's too smart for me. I've been outsmarted by a flipping piece of machinery. So you know, you do this, and do this, and you just and it starts. I'm like, oh, okay. You got to put your foot on the brake? Why? It's just going to sit there and idle. It's in park. That's how they designed it. Fine, 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 fine. And at this point, you know, I'm pretty well frustrated because I don't understand the new. I haven't got acquired to the new. It's the same thing with you and me when we're becoming new. We get the revelation that we're new in Christ. The old put the pump the thing up, pump, 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 and put the key in and turn it and wait, zhoo, 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 until it kirks over. This thing, you just go, boom. That's how drastically different you are as a new creation. Get used to it. Get acquainted with your newness. You don't have to sweat this. You don't have to work so hard. You're in Christ Jesus. Are you getting it? I'm hoping you're getting the funny parts because I'm trying to get as funny as I can here. Acquaint yourself with the new. In the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God did not condemn a compromised replica of you. He rescued the original. He went right back to the Adamic picture of you, who you were before the foundation of the world. He rescued that from the jaws of death and deception and lies and all that crap of the enemy. He went, "Uh uh-uh, you ain't having their mind. I don't care what you have to say. Their mind, now the realities of that will come to pass is that it's processed out in your time. See, we've been with him since a long, long time. Created in his radiant mirror likeness. Any other self you're trying to find or esteem will disappoint. Absolutely. Religion will try to tell you to put on a mask so that everybody looks the same or that you look, I'm fine. I am just so wonderful. Life just smells like roses. When I poop, it smells like floral. And we do that. We tell, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Glory to God. We can talk about poop in church, right? And why do you think they washed the disciples' feet? There wasn't just like dust on them. Okay? So going on, I want you to recognize the truth of who we are. We we, we don't put on masks. I'm not into that religious stuff. Don't put on a mask or I'll come over and peek behind it. You won't like that. Because it's all about uncovering. God doesn't like us to hide. He doesn't want another Adam and Eve with a bunch of leaves stuck on themselves. He's like, I made you beautiful, and that's how I see you. Stop hiding my beauty that I made you. You are in Christ. You are beautiful. Don't hide it behind some silly mask that distorts the true beauty of who you are in Christ. Got it? Okay. Man, this is good. I wish I had notes. I'll have to watch the video. See, I'm dropping down away. See, we are reconnected with our original Genesis through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. This new birth endorses and celebrates the hope of the ages. God's eternal love dream continues in life. All right, we're going to go over uh, First Peter or Second Peter one four. We've been talking about this most of the morning. I'm going to hit these real quick. This is exactly what God always had in mind. I'm going to be reading out of the uh, the Mirror Bible of, of this. This is exactly what God always had in mind for us. Every one of His abundant and priceless promises pointed to our restored participation in our godly origin. Everything because we have all these beautiful promises. It's all about look. God's going. See that? That's what you are. See that? That's what you are. 
See that? That's what you are. The promises. He keeps bringing our eyes back to look at the promises of who we are. The priceless promises pointed to our restored participation in our godly origin. You are one with me. But, no, you're one with me. But, I'm st- you're one with me. I messed up. You're one with me. Let's talk about it. Okay. This is his gift to us. That's his gift. You are what I say you are, not what anybody else does. The accuser of the brethren has been thrown down, trampled, and is being led captive behind the chariot of Jesus Christ in chains, and you're seated with him. Stop getting back there and trying to unloose him out of his chains or listen to his vile lies. You listen to my loving voice and what I have to say. This is his gift. In this fellowship, we have escaped the distorted influence of the corrupt cosmic virus of greed. His image and likeness is redeemed in us. The default settings are restored. We are rebooted to fully participate in the life of our design. He reset. Bam. That's what Jesus did. He died on the cross, but he rose to reset everything. Bam. We are in him. We are his body. It is alive across time. His body has been alive since that enthronement. Fully functioning in the Christians, in us, His body and His bride, which His bride isn't yet to come. It has already happened. We are already the bride. That marriage supper of the Lamb already took place. We'll cover that, that down the road. But in the midst of this, that second, uh, for second Peter 1 Peter 1.4, that is the divine nature. The divine nature is His perfect body dream for you. In Him, His heart in you, you reflecting Him, that is your divine nature that has now been swallowed up because you're in Christ Jesus. You've been swallowed by that nature, not the stuff that was there before. The next one, Romans 6.11. This reasoning is equally relevant to you. Calculate the cross. What's the cross done for you? It brought, bam, forgiveness, done. Finished work, old law, done. No longer a part of my life. Bam, close the door, box it up, burn it. It no longer has any residence or residue or relevance relevance to your life. You are a new creation. Then can only uh, there can only be one logical conclusion. He died your death. That means you died to sin. You are now alive in God. It's when you're dead, sin has no place to land. Don't build a landing strip. All right? There's no place. Jesus said, the prince of this world has come and he has found what? No place in me. You are in Christ. There's no place for him in you. Don't make one. Don't make an add-on. Don't extend. Don't buy the... God's not going to give you a building permit to build an extension to have the enemy come over there and live with you. It's not the purpose. He goes, denied. And if you want to be a squatter and make room, that's your problem. That's for you to work out. And Holy Spirit will talk to you about that because he will convict you of that, not condemn you. He'll convict you that you're building outside. It's not acceptable. But if that's what you want, okay, you'll reap the benefits of that. All right? I'm going to use that word purposely. You go out and you do all the stuff that's contrary to the root of love, you will reap the benefits of what you're doing. So the benefits that God wants you to have, you'll benefit from the other stuff. Have we all done that? Amen. Are we still doing that? Absolutely. I haven't got all the revelation that I'm the righteous of God in Christ just yet. I'm still working. It's okay. Don't feel bad. This, the, the apostles took them a while. And you know what? I don't know if they all made it. I know John, you know, Paul. They all, you know, all but Paul died, right? Did John? No. John was the only one that didn't die. Ever, uh, Paul, uh, Apostle Paul and all the rest, and they lived their lives. But you know what? They, they, they had to press through. They were working it out. Sin consciousness can never again feature in your future. Stop fixating on, oh, what if I sin? What if I sin? What if I, whatever you set before your eyes, you're going to go there. You're driving down the road, and you see something like a be- beautiful, fancy car go by. You watch that car go rim and by. What's going, you're going in a ditch because you're looking this way, and your hand, you naturally turn. What you fixate on, you're going to run into Okay? So stop being sin conscious. 
what if I, you know, you've, we've done this exercise. If I say hot fudge sundae with peanuts and, and it's a nice, you know, chocolate swirl vanilla and that hot fudge and there's just, you take the top off and you smell that and you smell the hot chocolate and they put those fancy little Spanish peanuts on there and then <laughs> with the whip topping and they ding with the cherry on top. Now you all think, oh man, I can, I'm ready for that. That's right, because you envisioned it. Okay? It used to be steak, but you know, we're getting there. We're going to have burgers and stuff like that later. So anyhow, don't fixate on your sin. Reckon yourselves, therefore, dead to sin. I'm dead. Temptation comes. Hello? Anybody home? Nope, just those dead people in here. That's sin, right? Yeah, it's sin. Nope, we're all dead. Sorry, have a nice day. Somebody else's house. Go on. Don't answer the door. You're dead. Make sure you reckon yourself. Remind yourself. Can you hear that? It's hollow. So I remind myself, I'm dead. Maybe some of you go stump. Mine goes doing, doing, doing. It's okay. I got the mind of Christ. I remind myself. I reckon myself I'm dead. I reckon I'm dead. Reckon yourself, therefore, dead to sin. The word means to make a calculation to which there can only be one logical conclusion. In other words, calculate it, work it out. The cross. I died with Christ. Bam. I died with Christ. Bam. That means, okay, I'm going back and rereading it because I didn't get it the first time. I died with Christ. I am dead to sin. So when all of a sudden something starts stirring in my heart or my head and it's a contrary to the being rooted in love and in Christ, I go, I'm dead. That one don't work. There's no place to plug it in. From now on, think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue, and you hang on every word. You are dead to sin and alive to God. That's what Jesus did. That is reminding yourself of the truth. And with that, I'm going to stop. Because I only did three slides, and i got a bunch more to go. So I guess we'll do that another time. So, divine nature. Reckon yourself dead and alive in Christ. Sin doesn't speak your language. If I brought someone in here that spoke Mandarin Chinese, it would sound beautiful. I don't know what that was. might have been something like that. It would have sounded like that to me. Mandarin Chinese, I have no idea what they're saying. That's the way sin should be to you. I hear a bunch of chatter, but I can't hang heads or tails of what you're saying, so... You keep speaking, but I'm going to ignore you eventually because you're not making any sense, so you're, you know, okay? I, I, you don't need to talk to me. You're not making any sense. Go find a translator, and even then, Holy Spirit's going, la, 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 not listening. Okay? That's the process of maturing in Christ, reminding yourself that you're dead. Okay? Stand with me, if you would, please. Father, I thank you for today. You're laying down some good stuff, and we are recognizing that we of the transformation that you have purchased and done within our lives. I thank you for the grace that you've given us to empower us. Grace isn't a Band-Aid. Grace is a power that we can live transformed lives. I thank you for that as a rising in our, in our midst, and we are recognizing that we are being established in Christ, built up in Christ, new creations in Christ, and we are resting and learning to rest more in that. Father, I speak blessing over everybody in this room because I'm speaking it because I already see it. I speak what I see. I proclaim that the wholeness of God in Christ is upon you. Those blessings are upon you. You walk with an open heaven. And as you continue to press through, you are advancing the kingdom and bringing blessing to those around you. I thank you that we are alive and well, that your body, Lord Christ Jesus, is on this planet, and it is influencing all that are around us, including ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you.